Good evening, everybody. Brian Newbert here from GoldenBlack.com. Uh, down on the floor in Mackey Arena, following a Purdue-Indiana basketball game, or as I call that, Burning Man for student reporters, small-town newspaper folks, random radio stations, and just a crowd of media. Um, this is your GoldenBlack.com rap video following Purdue's 79-59 to win over IU. Uh, it is brought to you by our friends at the Purdue Union Club Hotel. Thank you to them, as always, for their support. We appreciate it. Uh, obviously, a rivalry game uh, for Purdue and Indiana here. One in which there were no surprises in terms of how the game played out. And while you know we 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 obviously have to view rivalries for what they are and the unpredictability that can sometimes come with them, the best kind of rivalry wins for the team that's better are the ones in which there are no surprises. And Purdue clearly was the better team uh, coming into this game. Um, throughout all season long, and uh, there were no surprises. Purdue wins this game um, very, very comfortably, uh, shall we say, for the second time in as many meetings with IU this year, um, as it should have. Purdue is markedly better than Indiana this year, um, but Purdue's been markedly better than Indiana the last couple years and still lost three or four there. Crazy things do happen. Uh, you know, a couple years ago in Bloomington, Jaden Ivey's hurt going into that game. Robert Finnessy has the shooting game of his life and all, all of a sudden it can go either way and it goes the wrong way for Purdue. Um, last year maybe not as much. Um, I can't remember the circumstances of the game in Bloomington. Um, I was not present. Um, but this once again was a game in which there were no surprises. Uh, Purdue won this game going away. Uh, despite the fact that I, I think there's a question to be discussed here and this could perhaps be take desperation on my part uh, after another one-sided Purdue win uh, in that is Purdue playing its best basketball? It, it clearly isn't. These last four games, uh, the first three of which were kind of nail biters, and then, and then this one was just kind of a business-like sort of, um, I don't want to call it a grinder because it was never really close after those first couple minutes, but uh, it was just kind of one of those games where, you know, that they, they were both kind of treading water there for a while. All of a sudden, you look up and proves up 15 points, and it didn't feel like Purdue played great real time. And yet, still, you win this game by 20 points. You overcome an atypical start three-point shooting-wise. Um, Purdue started 0 for 7, whatever it was. Purdue misses free throws again, but there are so many elements to this team that just pick up the slack when something falls off. Um, you know, if it's not Lance Jones scoring, if it's not necessarily Zach Eady having one of those classic 35 and 18 games, it's Braden Smith carrying you, it's Mason Gillis making a bunch of threes, it's the four position combining to be really good offensively and really, really productive offensively. The rebounding's always there, the offensive rebounding's always there, 15 to five in that category for Purdue. Um, it's just one of those things where there's always something that's going to be there as a strength for Purdue. And it might be something different every single game. So while Purdue as a collective, I, I know that the meaning of that word has changed uh, in college basketball and college football here the last couple of years, but as a collective unit, Purdue might not necessarily be clicking on every cylinder, but it also doesn't need every cylinder. And I think that's a pretty good indication of a pretty good team is when you can just, this could win you the game one night. This could win you the next game. That can win you the next game. Uh, you know, I, I, I thought Purdue uh, had an opportunity to be up 15 to 16 points there at halftime and ended up only 12. And then it was one of those situations where Purdue really needed to start the second half well to make sure that a team that really didn't have any chance to win this game didn't have a chance to think that it did. And that's exactly what Purdue did. They opened the half on a 10-0 run and um, just really, really kind of flexed their muscles in that regard. And, uh, you know, completed the two-game regular season sweep of the Hoosiers. Now, barring a, uh, barring a Big Ten tournament rematch, this was the last meeting with Indiana for uh, Zach Eady, Mason Gillis, Ethan Morton, and uh, Lance Jones. And, all of those guys took this really seriously. They took it really personally. And I think that's one of the things that you've seen intangibly from this team all season long, that 
when there's a situation where there's a right, a wrong to be righted, so to speak, from their perspective from last season or from earlier in this season, Purdue is really, really good. They really prepare great. They come out strong. And I'm not saying they don't under other circumstances, but you look at Illinois, you look at the two games against Indiana, you look at the second game against Northwestern. I know that one went down to overtime, but uh, Purdue came out pretty strong in that game, I think. Uh, I don't know. Um, Anyway, uh, I think this Purdue team does take things personally, and as I've said all season long, that I'm finally ready to say out loud because I know how this can go. I would not want to be that team they play in the first round of the NCAA tournament for this, for this reason. Purdue is going to take that really personally, and they're going to kick the crap out of that team, I bet. Anyway, I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself here. Um, I don't think Purdue's playing its best basketball. I think the three games prior to this one, Purdue really had to do a variety of different things to stave off Rutgers, to outlast Northwestern, and then again to hold off Wisconsin, who is in the tank right now from a wins and losses perspective. And then, and then and then this game, I think you're just that much better than this opponent on your home floor. You can play your B game or your A minus game, whatever you would call this. Uh, and that's the standard Purdue has set for itself. That's the standard through which I think it's fair to look at Purdue. Um, you, you never want to look, expect perfection, but with a team this good, I think it, it it's it's fair to look at maybe what's not going splendidly as opposed to what's going great. And I think that once again, you know, Purdue's had to play through some shooting um, dips, uh, both at the foul line and the three point arc. They've been really good uh, from three all season long. Uh, that hasn't changed. They were, they're still really good from the three point line, even though they went over a half in this game. The foul shooting, you know, I, I, I don't think it's a huge red flag there. I, I think, once again, Trey Kaufman ran is not your best foul shooter. And when your best foul shooters don't go to the line or go to the line, you're going to miss some free throws. I think Zach Eady is uh, going to get more consistent as the season continues to wear on. Um, but I think Purdue is just so much better than the rest of the Big Ten, aside from maybe a, an Illinois team when its head is screwed on straight. Um, I think Purdue's that much better than most of the Big Ten. And that brings me to kind of my next point, is that did Purdue more or less clinch a share of the Big Ten title here tonight? I, I don't. I think it's way premature to say that, but what do I care uh, at this point? Um, Illinois losing to Michigan State combined with Wisconsin completely going in the tank uh, here, losing four games in a row, uh, you know, puts Purdue two games up. Is Purdue going to lose two more games this year? That has to happen, and then everyone else has to be unbeaten the rest of the way, at least between Illinois, um, mostly Illinois, uh, only Illinois maybe perhaps because Wisconsin is now so far back, and I don't think Northwestern is really in striking distance. I don't prepare for these videos, so just – Don't fact check me because I got nothing for you in that regard. I think Purdue's obviously, you know, I said after the Wisconsin game, I think that was the moment where Purdue took control of the Big Ten race as was bound to happen even after they lost those two games relatively early on in the Big Ten season. But I think Purdue's in, you know, complete command now, uh, now that Illinois has dropped another one and you're up two games on everybody else now. So big win for Purdue in that regard. Big day for Purdue, more importantly, because the loss by Illinois was more significant than the win by Purdue because no one expected Purdue to lose this game, um, nor should they have. Um, you know, I, I think that I mentioned before some of these guys taking these games personally. Uh, you know, Braden Smith is kind of the guy, too, who takes a lot of things personally and really, really um, – for as good as Zach Eady was with another ho hum, 26 and 13 and four assists, I don't think anything anybody should overlook that. That's a big deal. Um, I think Braden Smith really was kind of the guy in this game. Uh, him carrying them offensively in the first half, uh, 
kind of getting downhill, getting to the rim. I'm not sure what was going on for IU's ball screen defense in that regard. I'll have to go back and watch tomorrow, but there was literally partings of the Red Sea. Uh, see, uh, Indiana wears red, so the Red Sea, get it? Um, it? It just looked easy, and he made jumpers, and uh, uh, he got – he was just really good scoring the ball uh, in this game. Four steals, too. Great help defense game. Only four assists. So that kind of fell off a little bit. Uh, I'm kidding. That's uh, a product of Purdue not making threes more than anything. Uh, nine rebounds uh, for the smallest guy on the floor. Uh, just really, really complete performance from him again. And, you know, he didn't play his best basketball last year against Indiana. And, he didn't play his best basketball, at least from a shooting perspective, at Indiana. And he is that sort of guy who, when he is mad, he is better. And it's kind of a controlled fury for him to a certain extent, but I fully expected him to really come out and play well in this game, and sure enough, he did. Um, you know, Zach Eady, you just you just come to expect this stuff. Uh, again, don't take it for granted because you're not going to see any players – at Purdue anytime soon again where they get 26 and 13 and four assists and you just kind of look at it like, oh, yeah, it's kind of what he does. Um, as I keep saying all year long, you might be looking at the best player to ever play basketball at Purdue University, which is an enormous mouthful, but argue, you know, make the case otherwise. I mean, we'll see what happens in March. Ultimately, that is kind of what his legacy gets written by. But everything he could have done up until now, from an individual perspective, has there been anybody better? You know, uh, you know, Glenn Robinson didn't play his senior year, so there's there, there's something natural to that in terms of a qualifier. Rick Mount didn't have a three-point line, uh, so there's kind of a qualifier there too. But the qualifier with Zach Eady is how many free throws has he not shot over the years that he probably should have. Um, just don't take it for granted. That, that's all I really have to say about, about Zach Eady. As I've said tw 27 times this season already in these videos. Um, so that's kind of what I got. I mean, you know, I saw Purdue fans getting a little sassy about this game uh, in advance of it, as if there was no possibility whatsoever that Indiana could ever uh, win this game and that Indiana is now under Purdue's thumb for the – Long term again, I just want to remind everybody once again, these things can flip very quickly. And funny things do happen in these rivalries. So if you're enjoying this as a Purdue partisan, enjoy it. But understand that, you know, Purdue's had its time. Indiana's had its time. Purdue has its time again. But Purdue did lose three or four to these guys before this season. So enduring success in rivalries like this aren't necessarily – uh, guaranteed to endure. And I just used the word endure twice in the same sentence, and that was very, very sloppy punditry on my part, so I apologize. Um, so that's what I got from uh, Purdue 79-59 to 59 win over Indiana, uh, completing a two-game series sweep of the regular season. Again, always possible that teams will meet again in the Big Ten tournament. So you always have to qualify the regular season sweep versus the full season sweep uh, should one materialize. So, look, that's what I got. I'm just rambling at this point. Um, thank you, everybody, for watching. Thank you for reading. Thank you for listening. And thank you for processing our materials, however it is you process our materials. I will talk to you guys again um, on Thursday night after Purdue plays Minnesota. Thank you for the 8.30 game on a Thursday night, Purdue versus Minnesota. That is really appreciated. Thank you to the Purdue Club Hotel uh, in a non-sarcastic manner for your support. We appreciate it very much, and uh, I am going to get the hell out of here. Thanks, everybody.